Now that you've seen the proof for the power rule, it's time to use it to evaluate some derivatives. So let's, let's look at um, the derivative of x. So I'm going to write this with an exponent so you can see how this works. d dx of x to the 1. Right, that's what the derivative of x is. It's the same thing as x to the 1. So that would equal, I'd bring the 1 down in front, that's my n, and I would take x and raise it to the 1 minus 1. Well, x to the 1 minus 1 is x to the 0, and 1x to the 0 is just 1. So the derivative of x is just 1, and that makes sense because the, if you think of this function, if you think of f of x equals x, the slope is equal to 1, right? All right, let's look at the derivative of x cubed using the power rule. The 3 comes down in front, the n. x to the n minus 1 would be 3 minus 1, or just 3x squared. So the rule, the power rule, is very easy to use. You just have to be careful that you use it properly and you don't, there are some cases where it's not applicable but you are tempted to use it. When you look at the derivative of 2 to the 7th, it's very tempting to bring that 7 down, but you have to be really careful. This is not equal to 7 times 2 to the 6th. Alright, really bad. Can't do that. What is 2 to the 7th? That is just a constant. So d dx of 2 to the 7th is equal to 0. It's the derivative of a constant. Now d dx e, e squared, the derivative of e squared, e is not a variable. e is around 2.7 and when you square it you get a constant. And so the derivative of e squared is also 0. Now what we'd like to do is look at some scenarios in example 3 where the original function is not set up to use the power rule, but if you manipulate and rewrite the function, you can use the power rule. So we want to write these in the form of x to the n. So if you have f of x equals the cube root of x, that's f of x equals x to the one-third. To take the derivative, you would just take one-third x to the one-third minus, well I would subtract one, but to make it simple I'll put one in the form of three minus three, so we get one-third x to the negative two-thirds. Now there's more than one way to leave this answer. If you were asked to leave your answer with positive exponents, you would say one over three x to the two-thirds. If you were asked to write your answer in radical form, then you would say three cube roots of x squared. All of these, all of these are forms of f prime of x. They are all acceptable. It just depends on how you're asked to leave your answer. All right, so let's look at g of x, part b. g of x equals one over x squared. Let's rewrite it. We're not taking the derivative yet. We're just rewriting it. So we're going to write that as x to the negative 2. And although the proof that I showed you is a proof that works when n is a positive integer, I will just tell you now that the power rule works for all real numbers n. So n can be a fraction, it can be a negative number, it can even be irrational. It can be pi or e, the exponent. The rule still follows that in this case g prime of x will equal negative 2 times x to the negative 2 minus 1. So negative 2 x to the negative 3. If you are asked to leave your answer with positive exponents, you would rewrite it as negative 2 x cubed. All right, let's come down and look at the constant multiple rule. Right. When we look at the constant multiple rule, I'm not going to do a formal proof, but just relate it back to limits. Uh, a derivative is a limit, and what you already know is that you are allowed, uh, when you're taking the limit of a constant times some function, you are allowed to take the constant outside of the limit. And so the same applies to um, 
the derivative of a constant times a function. So the derivative of c times f of x is equal to c times the derivative of f of x, and these are just two different notations which mean the same thing. So on the first one, I'll do this out the long way and I'll write it as 7 times the derivative of x cubed, and now I'll take 7 times, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and you'll see here that in the end, this, the 3, the exponent, and the 7, the constant, end up being multiplied anyway, giving us 21x squared. So you could skip a step and not have to rewrite the derivative, but do it this way. We take d dx of 7x cubed, that's equal to 3 times the 7, and we get x to the second power, or 21x squared. So you're allowed to take the exponent or that n value down and multiply it by the constant. All right, for part b, we're going to rewrite this as d dx of, instead of having x to the fifth, negative x to the fifth over 8, it's going to be negative 1 eighth x to the fifth. If I don't rewrite this, I'm left with a quotient, and to find the derivative of a quotient is more involved, and we don't know how to do that yet, I haven't showed you. So your goal here is to rewrite this as a constant times some power function. And so now we can take the derivative. The first step was to rewrite. We'll bring the 5 down. We multiply it by the 1 eighth, and then we have x to the 5 minus 1, which is 4, giving us negative 5 eighths times x to the fourth, or you could leave it as negative 5x to the 4th over 8. Algebraically, those are equivalent expressions. All right, let's bring ourselves down to, this actually should be part C, and the next one should be D. Sorry about that. Okay, so I want the I want, I have got y equals 5 square roots of x, and I want to find y prime. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite this as 5x to the 1 half. Now I can take the derivative, y prime, is equal to 1 half times 5 times x to the 1 half minus 1, which is minus 2 over 2. That gives us 5 halves x to the negative 1 half. Again, this is an acceptable answer, or if you're asked to write your answer with positive exponents, you would write it as 5 over 2x to the positive 1 half. If you're asked to leave your answer in radical form, it would be 5 over 2 square roots of x. All acceptable answers depending on how you're asked. All right, let's look at this last one. We've got two things going on here. We've got a quotient and we also have the variable in the denominator. We want to rewrite this as y equals 5 halves x to the negative 3. So this is just an equivalent algebraic expression. Now I can take the derivative, which is dy dx. So I'm going to take the negative 3. I'm going to multiply that by 5 halves. That's going to be x to the negative 3 minus 1. So this is going to be negative 15 halves x to the negative 4th. Again, if you're asked to leave your answer with positive exponents, you would write this as negative. 15 over 2x to the fourth, and that both of these are considered acceptable answers for your derivative. Okay, in the next video we'll come back and do the sum and difference rules.